Sorry for that. This new computer it still has it this moment. Hopefully that is the last of it. I'm just going to get right into painting. What's going on here in the chat? Need a second computer for streaming? Another PC for streaming. I have a computer that can switch. Hi, Faye. You, you missed our little technical error there for a second. I was watching some of your blog videos today while I was getting some stuff um, prepped for the next couple paintings. Like, your, your blogs are, like, so, like, well, they feel, like, very nostalgic for some reason. Like I can tell that they're like you know, on the you know like newer side or whatever. Like they're not like super old the blog videos, but like they feel very nostalgic somehow. There's like a very like rainy day, homey, even when it's sunny, coziness to them. Still too loud. Oh my God. Nope. Nope. Blow up my ears now. Okay. We are ready to paint some more. I'm going to combine her into her little top. Call it. It's not really a corset. I don't, know what, I don't know what you would call it. A, not a vest. Top of her dress. I like how nonchalant I just roll in. Well, I was 
fixing the the stupid extension on the computer and I don't want to like mess with my scenes and switch cameras any more than I have to in case that decides to freeze the ca the computer up again. So I was just like, oh, I'm just going to be out of the com the camera frame for just a second. No harm, no foul. Anything to uh turn the volume down on that that sound alert. Sleep evades you. They don't. Well, for the Americans that are here, I hope that your turkey day was fun. Your um, Indigenous Peoples Day or Thanksgiving or however you want to call it. It was all right. It wasn't exactly a turkey day, though. Um, Dylan has duty today, but I mistakenly thought it was yesterday. So I didn't get any Thanksgiving preparation stuff ahead of time. Okay, well, I know that you probably know what Thanksgiving is, but I know that you guys don't celebrate it. So the question wasn't quite relevant to you. And I didn't want to, like, lump you in with everybody because I know better. I mean, it's it's a distinctly American holiday. So. You have American relatives, so your family does? Oh, okay. I see. Roxy's behind me giving her lamb chop a bath. It sounds disgusting. Oh, the mask isn't working. That sucks. I worked on that today, too, and for some reason the mask isn't working. Whatever. <laughs> Getting some playtime in when you're supposed to be having your duty nap. Oh my god. <laughs> she plays so rough. <laughs> she is a forever puppy. I feel like sometimes my streams are less about painting and more about me just like more more just like us talking than any painting. Like sometimes I get a ton of painting done and then other times I'm just talking. Like sometimes I'm just really distracted, I guess. I mean, yes, that that's true. Especially today, I'm I'm especially distracted because I wanted to start the next couple paintings in this series. So like I I wasn't really in the, in the mood to work on this one. I wanted to work on one of the next ones, but didn't work out. We played Terraria for five hours. What's Terraria? Is it like a 
She can still wear clothes. <laughs> You're not going to explain Terraria? Okay, that's fine. If I, if I remember, I'll Google it. It would take too long. Fair enough. It sounds familiar. I just, uh, I can't think of, uh, what it really is. Like, I know I've heard that, that name before. People call it the second Minecraft. Okay. But that kind of explains it a bit. Oh, 2D, not second. Sorry. So rearranging my studio was like a pros and cons kind of thing. I like how the room is set up more. And I like that you guys get to see my fun little wall behind me. But I don't like how all my cameras and broadcasting equipment is set up right now. Like, all my equipment used to be, like, more spread out, and now it's, uh, not. Henry's playing with his cat thing behind me, his little purple wheel. I guess what I really needed to do all along was just have it in the middle of the floor. Oh, you heard a noise. Did you do that that time, or did he? Oh, my music wasn't playing the whole time. I was wondering why it felt so quiet. <clears throat> but uh, yesterday was kind of fun I, I probably should have used the time to work on preparing art stuff but instead I just I cooked but I didn't cook Thanksgiving stuff I cooked uh I cooked beignets all day <laughs> and the day before that I made um Hungarian dish called pepper tosh chicken
You ate them all, all the beignets. Yeah, I've, I've been snacking on the other batch today. Especially once I figured out that if I put them in the toaster oven, they crisp up real nice, even though they're like technically a day old. And you'll eat those too. You're greedy. You're greedy today, aren't you? And you feel you feel dead after. Well, maybe you shouldn't be so greedy. So many beignets. What are you doing, Henry? He's really playful today for some reason. It was all you ate today before you came home. Well, I mean, you could have you could have had banana bread. That would have been more substantial than beignets. That had like whole oats in it and everything. I had one little slice of banana bread that I made for breakfast. I was full for a good long while. I missed out. You were in a hurry and you just grabbed an entire extra large container of beignets. Camera all messed up again. I think I fixed it.
get to find out that um, Cody Mingo's teaming finally made it home. Safe and sound, and they're very happy with it. So, that was really good news to, to have today. If nothing unexpected comes up with the new computer, I think I want to use some of the funds from Cody Mango's commission. And I want to uh, maybe get a little like screen printing kit to screen print some of my older paintings onto like canvas totes or t-shirts or something. I think it would be really fun. Gotta like look and see if uh, if I'm overestimating how far those funds would stretch or not. I'm going to be opening this thing called Crone. I'm going to connect it to Twitch. It's like a, like a website where like you can open a storefront. And I think they only take like a small fee. Um, which like it doesn't have like the reach that Etsy has, but like it keeps it like directly connected and relevant to what I'm doing here. So kind of a plus. And like, I don't think they take as much in fees. But that thing takes like 25%. That's, that's kind of ridiculous. I'm like, I think 10 to 15% is more than enough for them to take, but they still take like 25%. Which, like, is fine for certain types of makers, but, like, somebody that's doing what I'm doing, not so much. If you're doing, like, a, a quickly produced, low-cost craft, then, like, you know, you're selling like, large orders, and, yeah, you're going to be fine with 25% being taken from you, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm not, not making that kind of merchandise. But it would be really fun to have a little like portal or whatever where I can sell my paintings and you know we're hanging out here and I'm like I got all these paintings you know go check them out. And right there, nobody has to ask about like prices or anything. It's all right there for them. If they want to buy it, it's right there for them to do so. I think it would be really cool. Just out here trying to be a working artist, you know? 
about all the hubbub of galleries and stuff. I don't really feel like I'm a gallery artist anyway. I never really felt like I fit in in those types of places. I would try, but like, it just wasn't right for some reason. Like, I would try and paint stuff for galleries, and like, I always felt like I was like, putting my creativity in the back seat and, take, and like thinking too much about what a gallery wanted. You like the background? I really cannot wait until I can upgrade this camera mounting system. Every time I see the camera shake. Um, yeah, the background is really good. I think I want to go over it another time. Oh, just another layer. There's a couple of thin spots. But I think it's it's gonna work out like really really good with uh, her vibrant colors on her dress and um, and the crisp colors of the flowers. Paint those. Painting the, the Triforce to look like some sort of stone was really fun. I had initially thought that I wanted to paint it some sort of like gold, but then I was like, no, because her armor and stuff, like her, her shoulder pieces, they're going to be gold. So I wanted something that would, uh, that would contrast with the, the gold. The Triforce is good. I found something kind of interesting last night. I was looking for something to like relax to and watch on Amazon. I was trying to like wind down for bed. 
And they've done a reboot of Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire. And I mean, they definitely like put like a, I guess like a new age inclusive spin on it. And I thought like maybe I would have a problem with it because it wouldn't be like in keeping with the original writing. But turns out it doesn't bother me at all. Like they did it so well and they they kept the I guess like torturedness of the character Louis that it it honestly doesn't bother me. Because they, they kept like the really important things. I only watched the first episode because it's an AMC subscription. And I don't have a subscription to AMC. So only the first episode was free. But it was nice to know that like, it, it's nice to know that like, Anne Rice's work is getting some attention again. Like just because she's gone doesn't mean that the, the fantasy of the world she created is gone. And I think that's Cause she's definitely like an author that got me into like the more mature side of, of fantasy fiction. So. Plus she's like New Orleans royalty or infamy, whatever you want to take. So I'm always going to have that kind of like special spot in my heart for her for like cultural bias yeah she passed away um earlier this year this was the first year they had the the Lestat ball without her Kind of sad that I never actually went to it before she passed away. Maybe I'll go go to it when I'm like really old and I can go as one of the the like old ladies from the witching hour. If they're still doing it when I'm an old lady. When I'm too old to care about social anxiety. I've lived through everything already. I mean, she's been kind of off the radar for a while. She hasn't put out, you know, a ton of new stuff and the stuff that she put out later in life, it was like more religion focused. So, and when I say more religion focused, I mean more Christianity focused. So, I mean, she, she kind of, you know, narrowed herself down and kind of put herself into a box. But that was that's what she was inspired by. That's what she wanted to write about. That was the journey that she was on.
tried getting into her books, but you had a difficult time getting through Interview with a Vampire. So you do respect her work and how impactful she was in the literature world. Um, yeah, I mean, Interview with a Vampire, it, it was like her, like, well, it wasn't her debut because Witching Hour was her debut, I think. But personally, I liked um, Vampire Lestat better than Interview with a Vampire. Um, Interview with a Vampire, you're you're seeing an outside perception of Lestat, and you're seeing it from Louis's perspective. And Louis is depressing. He's sad, tortured, broken soul. So I mean. It's kind of hard to read somebody that's that miserable all the time or to, to read from the perspective of a character that's that miserable all the time. So the struggle is definitely real with that one and understandable. I mean, like, honestly, like, probably the best part of reading Interview with a Vampire is um, reading about Claudia. I think I think she's what kind of makes that story. And, you know, the rare moments when Louis finds like intense beauty in the world. And seeing things through his eyes that way. But everything else where he's just so miserable all the time is just one way ticket to getting down in your feels down. <laughs> You agree about Claudia, definitely. Um, but um, honestly, my favorite um, Anne Rice book was, I mean, I liked, I liked Servant of the Bones. Servant of the Bones was good. Um, and I mean, honestly, to really appreciate Servant of the Bones, you kind of have to read um, The Witching Hour first. Um, it's been a long time, so you need to try and read it again. I would definitely recommend reading the, the Witching Hour. It looks like a long read, but it goes fast, especially if you read it on an audiobook. Um, I've I've done both, and then uh, my favorite out of the whole series. It's it's kind of a tie between Pandora and uh, Memnoch the Devil. There's another one though. Um, what was that guy? The one, the one that's from Armin's perspective. Maybe it was just called Armin. I used to have that one too, and that one got. I I lent two of my like early edition, um, and rice books out, and then I never got them back. And I recently re-added one of them to my collection. The unfortunate part is that it's not available in a nice hardcover anymore. So I had to replace it with a mass market. So that was that was kind of upsetting, but at least I have the title back if I want to go and pick it up and read it. Or reread it, I mean. And Mimlock the Devil, it sounds like an intimidating title, but all it is, is Lestat meets the devil, like the devil, and kind of goes on this like anti-hero conflict against the devil. It's, it's Lestat's redemption story, really. Like... In Vampire Lestat, you you kind of like him, but he's still an asshole who does what he wants. But in Memnock the Devil, he gets a real like reality check. And it's, it's like a true soulful redemption for the character. Okay. I think this is that weird song that is just quiet for the last 30 seconds. You're going to try and read The Witching Hour? It's been a long time. You need to try and read it again or listen to it as an audiobook. 
Yeah, I um like my most recent read of the Witching Hour was. When I lived in South Carolina and I had a 50 minute commute to Hilton Head. Right now you're listening to 14 and you like it so far. What part are you at? just got them peeling off the paint in their rooms. Ooh. Now, Oscar is the, the like super or like the, the guy that takes care of the building, right? What's what's the name of the um the tenant that they like don't really like he's like really weird and like annoying and like always has like his nose stuck up about something and he like has like a german name or or he has like a german accent or something When they when they peel the paint off of the walls, that's when they start finding like little doors or something in the walls or switches or buttons. Oscar's the manager of the building. Okay, yeah, that's what I think that's right. Uh the other guy's name is slipping frame. <laughs> Give you a sec. Um I can't remember if he was religious. He like has like a, a grandmother or an aunt that lives with him. The numbers and formulas, that's what it was. I hope I didn't give anything away.
I'm not sure which character I'm talking about. Maybe you weren't paying attention to the book that closely. Sometimes you get confused how a lot of people are introduced when it comes to listening to audiobooks. I just look stunning. <laughs> Those highlights are beautiful. Thank you. Trying to get a flesh tone mix because I don't really see anything that's not the next step other than flesh tones. I mean, I think I'm thinking of the right book. Oh, hold on, I'm already my phone too. I think all the fur babies are taking a nap. Taking his nap for 24 hour duty. It only gives you the, the three... What? I know there's more characters than that. Maybe if I put characters in this minute. Come on, Google. Don't let me down. Oh my god, I totally forgot about the mutant cockroaches. <laughs> the glow in the dark cockroaches. Oh my god. gonna bug me for the rest of the night. Thanks for complimenting you on your videos. You're inspired to take out the camera again. Aww! I love that! That's good! Like, I was, um, it was funny because we were talking about our, our glass scrapers on one of the last stream. And one of the videos that I watched that was yours today, you did like a what's in your easel little section. <laughs> and 
one of the things was your your glass scraper and i like it brought a smile to my face thinking about that <laughs> That's something that's on my to-do list after streaming today, so I need to upload my VOD. Haven't done it in two streams. really pale. Hello, Mav. Sorry. Oh my gosh, that video, it must have been so boring. Thank you for taking the time to listen through all the ramble. No, it was fun. Like, um, I was, uh, so I was getting the line work together for the next three paintings from this series. And, um, I found that one of, one of the, the, the sketches, the line mark was just gone. Like I must have merged it with a wrong layer or something. Um, so I just, I lost all the line work for one of the, the sketches I did for this painting. And so I had, I had to like redraw all the line work for that painting. And uh, while I was doing that, uh, that's what was on. I was watching that video. So oh, it wasn't boring. And yes, Matt, I hope you're doing good. What are you up to on this fine Friday? I had to like stop and remember what day of the week it was. I hope. Kind of a weird set of skin tone. Okay. Because she's a video game character and so they just color grab real skin tone through my thing. Debating whether or not to make for financial decisions, aka go back, go Black Friday shopping or Amazon. Honestly, um, I mean, if there's like something on Black Friday, like a specific item that you've been like waiting and like saving up for, then like I would just do it on Amazon. I like honestly, I don't, I don't do Black Friday shopping. Um, like, I don't ever do it. I did it once with my mom when I was like 18 or 19. And it was, it was terrifying, honestly. Like, it's just not worth it. But like, if there's like one or two items that you've been like saving up to, up for like a specific thing, I would say, like, just find out on Amazon. Waited for the iPad to dip in price for your little brother, and it didn't. Oof. Sales aren't worth it to you anymore, even cyber sales. Yeah, they're not. I mean, like, it's kind of like one of those things where it's just like you have like a specific like date to look out for. But you still got him one. Aw. Do 
you just want a new monitor and maybe airsoft brain go burr <laughs> Um, well, I'm glad that like, you know, even if, you know, the, the sale that you were looking for didn't work out, I'm glad that you still got the gift you wanted to get for your little brother. That, that probably feels really good. I know that if I had the opportunity to do something like that for my brother, it would feel good. What kind of monitor are you trying to get? Probably like something really nice, I bet. Like a gaming monitor. That like does really fast, crystal clear stuff. I feel like if I was a gamer, like even then, I probably wouldn't even think about that kind of stuff. Like I would be improving stuff and then there would be like a monitor that's just so inadequate and I would never even like see it or pay attention to it. You've needed a new monitor for years. Oh, you want a good gaming and work monitor. I see. Yeah, I've got, I've got like a, I've got a 4K monitor and an ultra wide monitor and the ultra wide, it's like supposed to be better than the 4K monitor that I have, but I just don't like it as much. Like I prefer the other one, the, the 4K monitor that I had at first before I got the ultra wide to go with it. Maybe they will have more sales available for Cyber Monday. That would be nice. There's definitely some like camera mounting stuff I'd like to try and look for. And they're not like huge big ticket items. So like I'm hoping that like They'll be like motivated to move their inventory and it'd be like a really good like 30, 40% off or something. Like, I'm glad that I have the ultra wide monitor, but like, if there's a good opportunity to get a second one that's the 4K monitor that I have, then I would definitely take the opportunity.
I'm excited to be able to uh, launch and like connect my throne account to this channel. There's just a few more things I have to add to it before it's ready. But I think it's gonna be like a cool addition to have. Kind of round me out as a streamer. Or at least as an art streamer, I should say. Especially with uh, me wanting to add like green, like can green printed merch items. I think that's definitely the next step is getting those things that I can add and opening that throne account so that I have a little little storefront, an online storefront. Since we're talking about like online shopping. <laughs> I think it'd be awesome too. Especially now that I got the, the funds from Cody Mango's commission, I have a little bit of something to invest back into the channel. Still waiting on the artist to get back with my emote. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Like I don't know how busy she is. But I mean it's only been a week since I uh I finished like all the like I guess like information that she needed to draw what I asked for. Cause like I contacted her and like kind of like talked to her a little bit and then she's like, okay, you just need some pictures and like a few descriptions, like more, like more details. And I got like really nervous about sending her everything. I don't know why I got nervous, but I did. And it took me like another like three or four days to actually send it to her. I just hope that like I get the uh the emotes before everybody's like first little subs or whatever expire so that everybody will have a chance to play with those before anybody loses um current subs or anything.
Sorry, I had to fix the mistake that you made with your painting. You need to do... You need to repaint tomorrow. Uh-oh. We were also pretty busy this week for that person, the one you're commissioning to do your remotes. Oh yeah, because of the holiday. Well, she kind of has like a really cool system. I mean, not that it like makes her any less busy than normal, but like she does, like apparently she does everything like a month in advance. Like she does the next holiday a month early. So like right now she's actually working on Christmas stuff, even though it's November. Like, which is really smart. But I mean, like, I'm not, like, thinking about it as in, like, oh, I wish you would hurry up, rah, 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 rah. like, rushing her or anything. Um, I'm just anticipating, like, excited. This is a song that always makes me think of Cozy Girl. I mean, like, I fully expect it to take, you know, like, a few weeks for her to get the emote done. So I guess they probably won't be done before everybody's, like, first sub expires. Which, that's, that's my fault. That's on me. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to do with some of the funds from Pretty Mango's commission was I wanted to gift another round of subs. But I mean, I might I might actually wait until my emotes actually get here.
Oh, um, Faye, are you watching Wednesday on Netflix? It's like the little like spinoff series from the Adams Family that's just about Wednesday. Wednesday Adams. I'm like two or three episodes into it. It's really freaking cute. I think it's good. I mean, there's like a couple like changes to some of the characters that I don't really like agree with. But um, I, th I think it's fun. It was directed by Tim Burton, so I mean, that should tell you something. Definitely a Tim Burton fan. Same. We could spit on the floor and Oh, he he could spit on the floor and call it gold. Your brain will. <laughs> oh, I don't know if this one is a Tim Burton movie, but it's definitely something that any Tim Burton fan would probably like. Um, I just want to look it up and make sure. Is it a Tim Burton film? No, it's not a Tim Burton film. But, um, Igor with John Cusack as the, the voice actor for, for Igor. You watched that one before? It's so cute. It's such a cute little creepy movie. My favorite character was always the rabbit. I could keep talking about Wednesday, but I don't want to like spoil anything since you haven't watched it yet. Like, I don't want to like say anything about the characters and like my bias or like what I say, like influence your opinion of the show. I think it's better to like watch everything with like a very clean perspective if you're watching it for the first time. In like some ways though, thank you. You'll try to get to it soon so we can talk about it. <laughs> um, I will say this, in like a lot of ways, it kind of reminds me of the the Netflix Sabrina reboot. It kind of reminds me of that sometimes. Like not like the characters or the story. <laughs> Um, but like just like the overall feel 
of the the Sabrina reboot kind of it kind of feels like that to me. I don't know. I, it's like something I can't really put my thumb on. Looking a little extra pink. You like the Sabrina reboot at first? Yeah, I thought it was it was fun at first, but somewhere around like I think like the fourth or fifth episode, I just kind of got turned off to it for some reason. I can't really remember why. Dylan actually watched more of it than I did. Difficult to root for Sabrina after a while. I don't know. I, I I can't even remember what it was that I didn't like, but I don't know. It just seemed like the Sabrina of my childhood, she was like. Like, just as confused, but, like, more, like, sure of herself, like, as a person. And, like, this Sabrina didn't have any of that to me. So, I was just like, this is not for me. She became too powerful, and it definitely went to her head. Oh, okay. Like the the Sabrina of my childhood, she was like confused about like like magic and like the rights and wrongs and do's and don'ts and stuff. But like as a person, she was very like sure of herself and like what she wanted. And like to lose that in the character was just kind of a, a heavy loss to take for me to continue watching the reboot. I mean, that's just my take on it. Oh, I see. Okay. She does get the personal confidence back, but at the cost of her likability. Yeah, it kind of sucks when a character who's supposed to be like in like a like a, a drawn out like journey or struggle gets like a trump card a little too early. Like, where do you go from there? You know. doesn't mean it was a bad show though. I definitely think like it has like a very like appealing aesthetic. But that wasn't enough to keep me hooked on its own at least. Thank you. I was kind of disappointed that like the ants, her ants that take care of her, like they seemed a lot more like bad and broken. Because, like, 
in like the the older ones that I used to watch when I was younger, like the ants were so funny and like loving. Aunts grow and you love that they were developing as characters. Oh, okay. I maybe maybe I should have just given it more of a chance than what I did. Which is pretty much what all my friends told me when they were watching it was that like I gave up on it too soon. But I'm stubborn. There's a lot of character development with all the characters. Yeah, I kind of like figured it was going to be like that with the... <laughs> the like witches that like don't like, that don't like her at first. The, the like trio of witches at the like witch school or whatever. Like I could kind of see that like, like see it coming, I guess, for them. It's like they made them like seem like the mean girls and then like they started showing like little glimpses of vulnerability for them. And I was like, oh, it's not just a show about one girl. Which, like, can, like, play in favor of some shows. Like, oh, it's a well-rounded story with, you know, multiple plot characters. But sometimes it just spreads everything too thin. For me, it was only Sabrina that we were having issues with a lot of people to agree. I tried again. Don't let my opinion, no, don't let your opinion ruin it for me. Hmm. I'll think about it. I'm like really bad at like branching out on what I'm watching. Like I'm, I'm a chronic rewatcher will rewatch the same stuff repeatedly before trying a new show.
I'm also just really bad at like taking entertainment recommendations. Like a lot of times somebody will recommend a book or a movie or a TV show. And even if I was already thinking about watching or reading or whatever, because it was recommended to me, I won't want to look at it. <laughs> Like, by far, probably one of my most toxic traits. <laughs> and then I'll get all, like, disappointed that there's nothing on that I want to watch or that I haven't already watched. So I'll get bored eventually. I mean, a lot of it has more to do with the fact that I just want something that I can put on in the background that is something that I like, but something that I can like tune in and out of. If you rewatch a lot of movies, Kyle is like, is like that too. If you recommend something, he ends up not watching something. <laughs> um, but like a lot of the times that I like, I want something that I like in the background that I can tune in and out of, but I don't want it to be like too repetitive. Like I like the comfort of things that are familiar. And I'm always like getting distracted or like, you know, like trying to make something or to like draw or paint or, or I'm not doing those two things and cleaning something probably, but like, it's hard to, like, be productive and do all those things when it's just total silence or when it's something brand new that I haven't seen that I'm trying to like. So that's the biggest reason why I rewatch stuff. Even whenever I'm, like, literally, like, just sitting somewhere, it's probably because I'm drawing something on my tablet. So I still need something familiar that I don't have to pay attention to on. I want to like sit so close to this canvas because it's so tiny, but I can't because of the lighting camera situation in here. Like, especially for people that watch on like their phone or their tablet at night, if I like lean forward, into the light then like the brightness on their screen is just kind of like <laughs> Oh, 
honestly like the biggest problem is the light that i shine on my painting to see if it weren't for that light it it wouldn't be an issue but that light is so bright and so white but if it's anything less than what it is then i can't like see what i'm doing to paint so I need like a different light, I guess. And like, I could be like, oh, well, I'll just tilt the light away from me and more towards the painting. If I do that, it's like shining directly into the camera that's looking at me. Maybe if I had like still lights. Not that it particularly matters anyway, because like I only have a little bit that I can reinvest into the stream right now. I can only theorize before I'm able to actually uh, figure out a concrete solution. Here we are again, with a tiny face and a tiny nose. Barely even a break in between. Tiny faces and tiny noses. Not being able to lean forward probably makes me like a stronger painter in the long run. It's just frustrating. I'm sure if I leaned forward, I wouldn't be able to like look at the painting as a whole. It'd be bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to to maintain good posture. There's actually a chair I want to get um, that's supposed to help 
especially for people like me that can't sit like a normal person who like has to sit with their feet under them or can't sit in a chair like a, a regular functioning person for whatever reason. Um, it's called a, what's it called? Something, something meditation chair. It's sunrise or sunshine or I looked it up earlier today. There's like different companies making the BU chair. Oh, here it is. The the Piper song. I don't know how I got sunshine or, or sunrise out of that. The Piper song meditation office chair. It's like a chair that has like a second seat so you can like you can sit like like on a meditation pillow, but it's an office chair. So you can sit cross-legged without like putting strain on your knees and your hips. And then the, the back of it swivels all the way around. You can like lean forward on the back of it. And like have your feet up and everything. It's a really cool chair. And the, the BU chair is a chair that transforms into 10 different configurations. So um, there's like almost limited, limitless ways you can sit on it. And that one does like a little bit more, but it's not as like widely available. But like the reason I don't just have those chairs is because they're like 300 something dollars. Also, the BU chair was like mostly only available for Kickstarter. And as cool as Kickstarter is, I just don't trust it. Like Dylan's been burned by it before, like invested in like prototypes and then like never got anything. Like even though they were like, we're sending it to you now. Here's the tracking info and everything. And then like the thing just never got You'd actually need to make sales with your art to justify buying a chair like that, but it sounds amazing. Poor Dylan. Yeah, it sucks. And I I relate to that on the, the chair situation. Like. <laughs> I've only made money off of like a couple of my paintings, which is crazy that I mean, I've invested in my art setup, but I did most of it when I was working some sort of job. Like now that I'm not working, I'm not investing in my art setup. But like, I've got it developed to a point that it's like really nice. So like, I just need little small investments to make the stream better. It's just going to take time. 
I gotta keep streaming, you know? What do we do? We stream, stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up how much the like Blick Art Material Art Blick Art Supplies screen printing kit. I want the one that comes with drawing fluid and resistance. Not the one that's the stencil with the UV This one has the two jar stuff. Okay, you get ten by fourteen screen, Luigi fabric ink, dog photo emulsion, emulsion remover. You get drawing fluid, but you don't get blocking or resistor fluid. It might just be better to buy the piece of paper. I'm, I'm not going to use UV emulsion. Although, maybe I should learn how to use it because some of my painting sketches can get a little interesting. It might be hard to do that with drawing to it. You know, I thought it was going to be hard drawing the card for Ganon. It is even harder to draw the card for Herbo. She's only a featured character in the one game. So there's only like one version to pull inspiration from. Which also means that there's not like on of like reference images of but I finally got like a decent anatomical sketch of her just last night. I just have to like draw her clothes and like her environment and her face.
like Ganon, there's like multiple versions of him across the multiple games. Um, but I like made it extra hard on myself because I wanted to draw the newest version where he's like a mummy and here's a here's a king. But like with all the other like versions of him, I was able to like hodgepodge some like inspiration and get it done. Plus like people have done like a ton of like 3D models of, of his newest version. And I was able to like use that as a good reference. Somebody out there made a 3D model of him so that they could 3D print little dehydrated mummified Ganons. It is funny though, after they released that trailer of Tears of the King, where you get little glimpses of him, people made these like fan art sketches of what he must have looked like before he was like mummified or like if there was like a way to like restore him. And like everybody's making these jokes about how like he can't beat this glow up and stuff. It's so cute. It's hilarious. Cause they they draw him like a like a male Gerudo. Cause that's I mean that's what he is. That's his race. He's a Gerudo. But like in the fashion of like Breath of the Wild's Gerudo, where they're these like fabulous copper skinned beautiful people from the desert. I'm curious to see how like fast I would move in a painting if I was painting like art. No idea how I would film any of it for the stream. That's like the biggest advantage to painting smaller is that it's easier to put on the stream. Like if I was painting something big off of an easel, I can only imagine that I would have to like have a camera on a tripod and I would have to like constantly be vigilant so I didn't like walk into it or bump it or something. You need to get back into Breath of the Wild. I highly recommend it. It is such a cute, fun, beautifully done. And like, it definitely has its challenges, but at the same time, it can be very relaxing.
I'm a little bit discouraged from playing it on stream from the last time because apparently I play it so slow. According to some people. No, no, the, the game. Play. Play it so slow. I mean, I am a slow painter in my opinion, but that's not the part we were talking about. <laughs> Other people can go eat a sandwich. <laughs> I don't I don't see the fun in playing games so fast. Me either. And I, I definitely kind of went on a rant about that, but <laughs> go eat a sandwich. <laughs> I love you, Faye. Thank you for saying that. It's actually one of Dylan's nicknames because it's kind of like a, a pun or like a rhyme on part of his name. <laughs> Definitely, I agree. Plus like, I mean, like what I said the first time about how like the game developers put like so much time and effort into every aspect of that game and there's so much of it that you're gonna miss out on because you want to play it in record time like it takes hours and hours to make like just one component in that game sometimes because like that game was originally like made or, or animated or, or whatever, like the, the framework for it is built in a program called Unity. And I've, I've, I've learned how to use Unity before. So I know like the basics of how it works and like how labor intensive it can be. Take a moment to enjoy the graphics. Yes. But like taking a digital imaging class and learning how difficult it is to animate stuff in a game, like that was what told me that the the digital industry is probably not for me. Like, it is not enough to be passionate about art to be able to tolerate creating day in and day out in a digital environment. Like, that's a whole other breed of artist. A whole other, like, very special, very unique, very determined breed of artist.
worked with Unity too for a brief time for a class. The physics kill the physics killed you when it came to interacting with objects. I know, right? Like the the nail in the coffin for me was the coding unit that we had to, to study for Unity. Like doing the coding was that was it. That was the the last nail in that coffin. All those like if if then statements or whatever just ugh. like I I found a new respect for people that do computer programming or coding. Like, I thought that I already had, like, a pretty healthy respect for people in that industry, but, um, I definitely had, like, a more, uh, appreciative respect for them. <laughs> Forgot about, co about the coding. Probably so traumatized that you blocked it out of your memory. For real. 100% get that. Like, I felt so much like a fish out of water trying to learn that. It was crazy. And, like, I kept having, like, flashbacks of my high school physics teacher trying to teach me binary code and me having fucking panic attacks because it's fucking computer language. And, like, math as a language? That is literally my worst nightmare. I'm still laughing at Go Eat a Sandwich. Little nose. Your little nose is so hard to do. remember if I have a rage emote in the emotes that I commissioned 
but now I kind of want to have a rage emote that is me like throwing a sandwich at somebody just because you said that. <laughs> like the best insight. So Instagram kind of has me like a little bit messed up because I made a reel that was the one that's like, do it, serve everyone sandwiches and bring their crankiness to the safe place. <laughs> uh. And like, just to like help it like translate to people that are kind of new, I'll probably just call it like a knuckle sandwich emote, even though it's me throwing a literal sandwich. I'll just label it knuckle sandwich. But um, Instagram kind of has me like a little bit messed up because I made a reel that was the one that's uh like um you're married to your your phone background or lock screen and i like made that like as like a joke just to like kind of like be cute at dylan and that freaking reel has like 480 likes and my art videos have like five ten like i have one that got like a hundred i'm like why am i not getting this kind of activity on videos that show my art. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with people? You're looking at the wrong thing, people. Need to make more reels too, unfortunately. You did 920 views and 40 likes for your last one. About your messy space. Congrats on the likes on my last reel, even if it has nothing to do with art. Well, it's just like the one that's like, like show your like background on your phone or your lock screen. And it's like, you're married to it. How bad is it? Like some people have some like really random stupid 
stuff in their background, but it's just a picture from our wedding day. So like, I am married to my lock screen and it's great. But like, I just keep getting like continuous, like bing, bing, bing of my phone from that reel. And I'm like, oh, somebody liked one of my art videos. I'm like, oh, no, it's just a video about the picture that's my wedding day on my phone. I'm just hoping that like, it just like at least half of those people are like at least clicking on my profile and maybe even just looking at my art. I can feel me being talked about or thought of. Have you been summoned? I was just talking about that ridiculous reel that I made to like try and get a smile out of you. And now it's like completely like skewed the focus of my Instagram account. Because all the activity is on that video instead of uh, the purpose of the account. <laughs> Content is weird, random things. Apparently so. Like, I can only figure it has something to do with, like, the algorithm and, like, the audio that I use being, like, sort of trending audio or that, like, it's, like, an Instagram trend to make that video or whatever. You have been summoned. It is super windy outside. I can hear it through my earphones over my music. When do you have to leave to go back to duty? Oh, okay. Are you gonna try and go back to sleep and get some more, some more rest, or are you just gonna hang out? I don't know how much longer this little tiny brush of mine. I feel like if I tried to like dig the paint out of it really get rid of those last like five bristles I'm gonna go outside to fight the wind defend the house don't worry <laughs> you're crazy if anybody needs to be defended from the wind it's mabel if you put her outside right now, she'd have a panic attack. She'd be like, it's gonna eat me. The wind's gonna eat me. I promise that's what Mabel would think. The neighbor's stuff? Are you sure it's just not our trash cans? Cause they they are on that wall over there on that side closer to you
hopefully he'll get more rest. He might go back. You never can tell when him sometimes. This is when these paintings get Did you watch American Horror Story? Like any of those? Okay. I know you're a spooky girl. I forgot which season you left off on. Um, okay, well, which ones do you remember? Because the first one was just the haunted house, and then. <laughs> The second one was the um, Insane Asylum. And then the third one was the New Orleans Witch House. And then the fourth one was the Circus in Florida. And the fifth one was the, like, haunted reenactment season. It was all about the, the Roanoke myth or legend. So, okay, so you watched like almost all of them. That means that you need to get caught up on the summer camp flasher season. And And the season that's like about like aliens and Cape Fear or something. That's the one that I haven't watched. And I only watched a couple of the ones that were the like American horror stories. So like ones that not every season is a new story, but every episode is. I only watched a couple. Of them. I don't know how her right eye ended up being smaller than her left. summer camp because I did watch a few episodes I rewatched the summer camp because we did watch a few episodes of that but didn't finish it forgot about most of the details Kyle doesn't watch it with you and you have a difficult time watching new things on your own oh okay is there something about the American Horror Story series that he doesn't like I know it's not for everybody 
I can't get my mom to watch it and she likes scary movies too. My mom gets like uncomfortable with anything that has like too much like I guess like graphic sexual content. And like American Horror Story is too much in her opinion. Even though like compared to some of the stuff that's out there. Compared to the stuff in the 80s when like censorship was non-existent, like it's not that bad. He doesn't think it's really that scary. It's more drama than scary, according to him. Okay. I mean, I never really felt like they were like that scary to me either. Um, but it's more um, disturbing. That's to me. That's where the horror is. Is that it's it's like. It's like watching like a horrible, horrible event happening in front of you, but you don't want to stop watching it. It's just very disturbing. <laughs> He's wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, like if I imagine myself in those situations, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely fucking scared, but to, to watch the show as a viewer, um, it's, it's more disturbing than scary for me. Oh, while I was scrolling to Amazon last night looking for something to like veg out to while I like worked on some drawings on my tablet, um, I noticed that Human Centipede is a trending horror film again. Eh? Like, what is wrong with people? That is that is the Pandora's box of disturbing horror cinema. Like, that's that's one of those things that once you know it exists, you don't want to ever be reminded of it. It's disgusting. That was like the era of horror films where it was, let's try and find the limit of what people of what people will watch. Like that is the the corridor that nobody had any business going down. Oh, I was so disappointed that it was trending on Amazon. I feel like she's got fuller lips than that, but I just can't seem to make him look. Okay, I kind of fixed it. I have to wait for that layer of her face to dry, though. I can't do any more. It's just going to be a smeared, muddy mess. I'm going to wait for her face to dry and then I can put in her eyes and do the second layer. I can still do her ears. Little elfin ears. And since I'm going to have to do a second layer anyway, I can do it.
you and me. I mean, if, if you just wanted, like, the company, we could just do, like, a voice chat. Not that I would judge any of those things. Because up until about two days ago, like, my house was a church. Like, everything had just kind of, like, stacked up on itself. Because I was focused on getting this painting started. And then the, the old computer went kaput. And we had to do, like, a mad dash to get it replaced. Finally, I had like a day to set everything right again. Oh, and our washer has been acting up. So like our laundry got kind of backed up. But um, I did like a whole like deep clean on our washer. I think it might be okay now. We got like one of those. HE washing machines, like the first one I've ever had. And like, they need to just like, skip the, the E and go for an M for high maintenance, because it should be. It, nothing bothers me. I mean, that's that's all up to you. I, I'm chill either way. I know that people have lives that are busy and that shit happens. And, you know, I'm the last one to judge clutter or disorganization or boxes for that matter. So, like our last house, we didn't have room to fully unpack so like for like a whole like year we are year and a half we lived with like unpacked boxes around because we didn't have the space to unpack our entire house there were just things that we didn't have space for so far no other like dream hiccups Thank you so much. I love you too. Let's see. Ooh, our little our little decorative band at the bottom of the set. I'm like almost completely skipping it. It's just like gold with like white dots. Okay. Oh, I kind of like squished it by accident. It was supposed to be gold and then like a little line of pink in the middle and then like some more gold and pink with the white dot. I think I'm just gonna
big fire. Does, uh, does Mimi, does she, like, flop on the ground when she's really happy? Like, she, like, throws her, like, head and shoulder down? Because grandmother passed away a few months ago. I don't know. I mean, it's just another part of life. And we are moving into her old place and trying to make it your own. Oh, okay. I see. My grandmother's trying to move out of her house. She's trying to sell her place. She had a fall not that long ago. And uh, now, you know, we're all kind of you know, like, well, maybe you shouldn't live on your own. They almost got it sold, and then the buyers decided that there was too much renovation that needed to happen. They backed out on her. Oh, wait. Buried under everything. A lot of renovations need to happen here too. 20 years of neglect. I don't blame her. She was by herself for a long time. Yeah. I mean, like, my grandma, she's like had like a couple things here and there done. Like she she kept having problems with her water heater. And it was like the second or third water heater that had been in that house. So she just went ahead and was like, you know what, I'm done with this. She put an electric water heater in. And then she had something else done. Oh, her like electrical panel was like a rat nest from my grandpa, like splicing into it for a bunch of random stuff. And, uh, it just looked really, really bad and didn't look safe. So she had that redone. Um, and there was like a couple like other like little things here and there that she's had done to it, but like it's still like a uh, 60 year old house. So, and like doesn't have central air and um, the kitchen is like teeny tiny and like the layout in general is just kind of strange and like it doesn't have like nearly enough windows because my grandpa was like you have more windows and you gotta like heat and cool it more so he like would hardly like let her put any windows in when they built the house she had to fight for every window <laughs> Just like things like that. There's one room in that house that used to be like my very first art studio. And for some reason at the time, I thought it was an amazing idea to paint it with this like red stone textured paint. And like now looking back, it it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, do you do you remember that old um home renovation show called 
trading spaces. If you remember that show or like at any point ever saw it, like I swear to God, we're like somehow the same person. Who'd you just trip over? Okay, okay. So you remember some of the like truly just ridiculous designs and like those like design choices that used to come out of that show? Because it was like two neighbors designing each other's face. It wasn't even like really the, the designers. The designers were just like guiding hands for like the like craftsmanship well it it was something kind of like that <laughs> a lot of poor decisions that were bad design choices but like done kind of well <laughs> it was like that it was definitely like a statement move and it it did not play out well Especially with like hindsight, it's just it's so There is a circus looking room where the walls were painted yellow and thick red stripes with green carpet. I mean, not that bad, but as far as like garish colors, yeah, that's how bad it was. <laughs> See, at the time, I was like obsessed with this like Moroccan uh, aesthetic, you know, like the, the brass tin lamps and the like deep sultry colors and like pillows, just upset. And for whatever reason, I just knew that that paint and that texture would, would give me that aesthetic that I was obsessed with. And in reality, it just gave us a really strange colored room. <clears throat> but yeah. Just because I'm an artist does not mean that I have always been uh, great at making design choices. But I definitely learned from those mistakes. Camera's all blurry. I can't see you. Focus on the maples. There it goes. <laughs> Painter maples. Painter maples. 
just now learning how to decorate a room and you and you stink at makeup. No. You don't look like you're that bad at makeup from your YouTube channel. Like from what I've seen on your face. Can I have my chair back? So I can paint? <laughs> Why are you being so cute? Can I have my chair back? <laughs> she's just she's just refusing to get out. Can I have my chair back? Okay, 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 here. Go that way. Go that way. Go that way. Roxy, let her down. Roxy was like purposely standing in her way so that she could like no. <laughs> It's Mabel stream now. Yeah. The tail wag. She's so <laughs> She needs an art hat. <laughs> little a little beret. Mabel will be the cutest as an artist. Where's her art hat? Don't let them fool you. They all ate. Yeah. Definitely. She did that to me yesterday morning. You'd already fed them their their breakfast kibble. And she like went in there and like brought me to her food bowl. And was like doing her little her little nose point and snorting at me. And I was like, wait, did you feed them already? And you did. Especially Mabel will be the, the cutest. Like, hey, I need the food. She's a little chow hound. She sneaks and like gets seconds from her sister's bowl sometimes. Because Roxy, she's a she's a snacker. She likes to snack on her food. Except for dinner time. They eat up that that wet food. Gobble it up. She takes after you. Yeah, y'all are both chow hounds. Thanks for the stretch. I needed it. Mimi attacks your feet if you take too long to feed her. She's not cute at all. Oh, Mimi. These cards are gonna look so good as a set. <laughs> Like her mama when she's hungry, both turn into hangry goblins. Oof. Same. Dylan can attest to that. Like there, there's like literally those videos that's like the before and after you feed your your wife or girlfriend or your, your female companion, whatever. And I, I literally fit into that stereotype. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not trying to get trapped. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh, come on. We're literally admitting to it. There's no trap.
especially that video that the girl is up in the corner on the ceiling like a demonic entity. Oh my god. That one is definitely like the uh, the internal um, illustration of what's happening. For sure. <laughs> you has nuggies? <laughs> I think that's what she says. But back to what I was saying when Mabel had hijacked my chair. Uh, I saw like a couple glimpses of your makeup on your your youtube vlog and uh the makeup you were wearing was really cute i think you're fine i got a paparito over there while you take another quick nap i'm guessing she's like all four feet in the air right next to you she does or she's on top of your pillow that's her two like favorite sleeping positions on her back right next to Dylan or on his pillow or on his chest oh it's my dog oh yeah she's she's definitely the snuggle bug You're welcome. <laughs> Roxy keeps burping on you? Yeah, she's she's kind of burpy after dinner. I think it's because like they lap up their their wet food so quick. I think they like kind of inhale it a little bit, and they like get a fair amount of air with it. You laughed because you know, yeah. Maybe making them hot burp right on you. Dangerous times. <laughs> Mimi places her butt on your face when you wake up in the morning. Apparently, it means that. Cats trust you when they do that. They are showing you their friendliness, but I can, I can do without that kind of friendliness. <laughs> yeah, Henry likes to show his forbidden cheerio a lot too. you. Mabel is trying to suffocate you. You can't give her enough attention when you lay on the couch and she's on your couch. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> Surrender to your fate. <laughs> and reshuffle that thing to the little hand covering the mouth emoji.
He'll be like, oh, hey, thanks for the pet. Look at my butt. <laughs> Wait, stop betting me. Oh, why stop betting me? <laughs> Like, he, he, like, walks up, he gets all friendly, gives you his head, and then, like, immediately just spins around, just butt, poking the butt up. He, like, he really, really likes, uh, like, the butt scratches, and you, like, scratch them by the, the, the bottom of their tail. He really, really loves that. A rough time out here somewhere. <laughs> And like like booty pats. He loves booty pats. He just he melts for booty pats. With the burping and King Henry's forbidden Cheerio, I can imagine. <laughs> yep, hot, thick burps and forbidden Cheerios. I'm really in the trenches of uh, disgusting pet affection. <laughs> Mabel tries to steal your beer or overload, overload her cuteness for your plate of food, but you never give in. She may get a fry or two, but that's it. Turn her little stinky butt. Well, I guess since he decided to end up going back for another nap, maybe we can go over to stay and hang out. Oh, sweet karma's live. might need to call it on my average personality. Lucky Mimi doesn't insist on eating human food. She only cares for, for her tiny bit of yogurt and rice. We offered her meat. She rejects it all. We should raid her. Um, I I would if it wasn't just uh you and Dylan.
I'm definitely tempted to like keep hanging out, but once I finish the trim on the bottom of this, I'm gonna call it for tonight's stream. Like I don't want like my average to get bad and like the algorithm to like push me down. I don't wanna have to like think about that kind of stuff. Make decisions for the stream like that, but what it is yeah i'm probably gonna like go over to her stream and watch her while i uh i prep my next couple paintings we'll, we'll hang out with her <laughs> kind of like we're we're raiding separately You want to pick me up on my offer need to figure out some things because you work in the middle of the living room and sometimes kyle is playing video games behind you it's cool whatever's convenient if like you know it's not like a an easy way to do it i don't want to like cause a bunch of uh strife for you in the middle of the night um we can just like hang out on a voice chat on our earbuds or something it's cool I was probably just gonna like put my phone in my little boost mount, phone mount, and uh, we could do like video chat on Discord off the phone or something. I mean, if we were gonna do video. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill the stream right now. Um, you can like DM me or whatever on Discord, whatever you decide. Video chat on the phone might work better. <laughs> All right. I will see or hear you in a little bit then. Didn't think of that message later. Okay. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Have a good night. Adjust my mic. Open the threshold a little so the volume fluctuates at times, but you can fix it for the next stream okay thanks babe <laughs> thanks for hanging out during the stream oh that's not the right theme okay that's weird